Hello, and welcome to Storytime Reddit. Today's story comes from r slash malicious compliance, where we find stories of people who perform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Our story is, supervisor asks student with cancer to turn on their camera during a virtual meeting, and you won't believe what happens next. Clickbaity article titles aside, it's a long one. It happened two days ago, and I'm still giddy. Enjoy. All the below names are pseudonyms. There are two important background things to know for the story. One, I was diagnosed with a rare ovarian cancer at the beginning of this year. I had surgery and some chemo, and I'm mostly recovered now. I still have to go in for frequent testing and occasional monitoring. I am a private person to the extent that I have dated people for years without telling my parents. So you best believe random coworkers and bosses are unaware of my medical history. Two, I attend a university that has an ambassador program. Basically, if you have a high enough GPA, you are able to interview for the program. And if you get in, they pay for your tuition during the time you are an ambassador. In exchange, you work five hours a week and work graduation slash other events. I am one of these ambassadors. This is my story. My supervisor for the ambassador program, Ms. M, has spent the majority of our time together belittling me. As I sit here about to type about her, I find myself already exasperated thinking about reliving some of the details. So I will be short and sweet for both your sake and mine. She follows every rule to the letter and leaves no room for collaboration or discussion. As an example, we use Microsoft Teams for communication and she has us clock in and out in a group of 20 people by saying, I'm here and I'm leaving. So every day you have to scroll through dozens of messages to find anything of import and listen to notification sounds every time someone so much as takes a lunch break. I suggested using the time clock function on Teams and even offered to set it up for us and was told that I was deliberately undermining her position. Another quick example is her vehemence when I told her I didn't have any social media to advertise the college. She was certain I was lying and went so far as to ask the other ambassadors to try and find me. They didn't. There's nothing to find. Crazy concept. I've challenged her at a couple of junctures, but ultimately realized I was fighting a losing battle and I'd be better off keeping my head down. <laughs> Fast forward to four days ago, Friday. There's a mandatory virtual event in three days, Monday, where the dean of the college would talk to the ambassadors, as well as live stream the event to the college's website and YouTube page. Ms. M sent out a message that I will copy and paste here because the formatting is so dramatic that it makes me chuckle. Students must have their cameras on and phones off. Repeat, phones off, cameras on. Like, come on lady, bold caps or italics. Your email almost gave me a stroke. I follow up the same day. Ms. M, unfortunately, I will be at a doctor's appointment at this time and will be unable to turn my camera on during the event. No response. I send another email to follow up. No response. The day of the event rolls around. I direct message her through Microsoft Teams 10 minutes before. I see that she's seen the message with a red receipt. Nothing. Okay, video chat starts and several students join the session with their cameras on. Then the Dean. He gets halfway through introducing himself and Ms. M interrupts him as he takes a brief pause and says, excuse me, could we please have all of the students turn their cameras on? I say nothing, but put a quick message I already had typed in anticipation in the group chat. Ms. M, I have a private situation that bars me from turning on my camera. I have contacted you individually. Not but a few seconds after I send it, I get called out by name and I respond audibly. Ms. M, I cannot turn on my camera at this time. And she responds, expectations were clear and you were told multiple times about this. Every other student here managed to do it, and I expect the same out of you. Now, one of the cool things about having cancer is you become very familiar with the hospital staff, and if you're lucky, they're fun to talk to. During COVID, my nurses were my tethers to sanity because no one could visit me while I had inpatient infusions. So I told one of my nurses, Amy, about the situation beforehand. She joked that if I was told to turn my camera on, I should really play up my illness. In any other situation, I would have been entirely opposed. But sweet revenge was in sight. When I replay it in my head, I imagine that anime fist-clenching thing when the protagonist resolves to get revenge. 
I set my laptop back a bit further from myself on my legs so you could see the entirety of me in my hospital regalia. Teams will display the person currently talking as the largest image in chat. Everyone had their audio off except me, the Dean, and Ms. M. So when I turned my camera on, I was displayed as the EKG loudly thrummed away on max volume thanks to Amy. Silence. I asked Ms. M through email and Teams if I could opt out of having my camera on, but she insisted. I waited a beat to see if anyone would say anything and then continued with my special vocal blend of melodramatic gratitude and illness-laden shakiness. Virtual engagement is so important for this new era of learning. I can see why having the camera on is important, though I was hoping I might be granted an exception. Ms. R, you are more than welcome to turn your camera off. I am so sorry for the misunderstanding. Thank you so much for making a special exception for me. It's been a difficult week, but I feel grateful to be here. Then, two people leave the call. One was Ms. M, and the other was Anthony, who is Ms. M's boss. I didn't know he'd be there. I haven't heard from either of them yet, but I'm awaiting a follow-up with anticipation. I'm typing this from the hospital and feeling gratitude for a lot of things. Tis the season, after all. I am here. I am alive. And above all, this stupid disease won't stop me from putting a bully in their goddamn place. Update. This will not contain the juicy follow-up. Just some clarifications. So do you guys want an update? No matter how hard I try, I just can't tell. A couple of clarifications. I don't, at this time, want to sue her. I want her to be better. I am not in the thick of cancer right now. I'm definitely better than the beginning of this year, though I appreciate the warm wishes. I was going to ask the university to take down the video on the university website and YouTube, but when I went to check, it had already been removed. I already saved a copy of it per the advice of a colleague. Reading through these comments has been the highlight of my week. I've been reading them in the way you'd expect an anthropologist because of the myriad of reactions. Almost all of them have been loving and supportive. About 6% of them are just downright weird. Some of my favorites. 1. A colorful variety of people threatening to assault or kill me. 2. People telling me how they've either A. had cancer or B. been to college, and it was nothing like that, and I am dead wrong. Tisk tisk to me. 3. The guy who asked me for nudes. I can't imagine what went through his head. Did he get to the second line and see the word ovarian and think, you know who sometimes has ovaries? Women. Good enough for me. I also didn't expect so many people to compliment my writing. I've been procrastinating finishing up on D&D one-off campaign, and this has really boosted my motivation. And now for the top comments. When she logged off, did she say, I'm leaving? OP, I just audibly laughed at this, you brilliant bastard. I apologize to the patients in the next bed then. I hope I didn't wake them. OP, Doris will be fine. As a Teams admin, I can say for sure that your boss doesn't understand how to use Teams properly. Your suggestion to use the shifts function is correct. OP, you have no idea how validating this is to hear. I also want to validate how much of an overreaction it was on her part to tell you that you were undermining her by simply suggesting an improvement to the system. That's terrible management on her part. Totally agree. I've managed people before and one thing I learned early on was if you were, or thought you were, the smartest person on the team, then you need a better team. My highest performing teams were made up of people willing to make suggestions if they thought they found a better way. When we, as a team, were willing to try it and not dig their heads in just because we've always done it that way, we were really successful. I lost a lot of team members this way because they kept getting poached for better opportunities, but that was a good thing. It made my team a premier spot to go to, and I had my pick of talented people to replace them with. Sounds like working for the government. About four to five years ago, it was clear that our dot matrix printers were getting the boot. Parts couldn't be found anymore. It was getting more difficult to order the ink ribbons and paper, etc. I tried to make helpful suggestions about how to change things up so that the switch to standard printers went smoothly. I was told I was wrong. The old printers weren't going anywhere. There was no need to change anything. Told I was being rude by suggesting changes that were unneeded. So anyways, two months later, IT shows up to switch out the printers and cue the meltdown. Phone calls were made, feet were stamped. So much drama, it was comical. Instead of being prepared for the switch, they were scrambling to figure out what all needed to change to make it work. NYPD is the largest purchaser of typewriters in the world. 
Up to at least five years ago, they still had to type their shit notes and things on manual typewriters. The reason? They had five years worth of triplicate paper on order, so they signed a seven-year typewriter contract. When the paper runs out, they sign another contract for more paper because they still have a contract on typewriters. When the typewriter contract expires, they still have paper on order, so they sign another one. Cops were using their computers to edit their notes, then manually typing them into typewriters. Government at its best. Some government agencies still do contract notifications by telegraph. This was so fun to read. Well done, you. Also, Rainier cherries are the best cherries. OP. I'm glad my post is bringing to light the real issues, like cherry superiority. Thanks for stopping by Storytime Harvest. We'd love to see you again. Of course, like and subscribe if you want to hear more content. Thanks again.